Hello, ladies uh, and gentlemen. I would like to share with you an Afro pearl. And the question is whether buffered solutions containing sodium may have an impact on sodium levels in patients with AKI. These are my conflicts of interest. I'm currently professor of research in critical care at the first department of anesthesiology and intensive therapy at the Medical University of Lublin. So let's set the stage. D1 is on definitions, D2 the diagnosis, D3 is all about the drug, D4 is dose, D5 duration, D6 de-escalation and D7 discharge. What could we do better? So if we have D1 to D7, we multiply, we get D2 to the seventh power. And this is what I would say fluid stewardship. So D1 is on definitions and I'm not going to overload you with a lot of definitions, but you're all aware of the fluid balance and fluid overload for that you need to divide the cumulative fluid balance in liters by the patient's baseline body weight and is defined as a cutoff value of 10% of fluid accumulation. We have early adequate goal-directed fluid management, like in surviving sepsis campaign guidelines, late conservative fluid management, and late goal-directed fluid removal. This is the hot item that we refer to as the resuscitation. So when it comes to acid base, we can explain the base deficit as the amount of strong base that is needed uh, to restore the pH to 7.4. And the base depth excess is uh, a strong acid that needs to be added. A buffered solution is a solution that contains an acid base, but usually it's bicarbonate or other organic anions to maintain the strong ion difference, which is the difference between the strong cations and anions, so the ones that are fully dissociated in water. So we do speak about fluid overload, hypervolemia, hyperhydration, edema, and while hypervolemia usually results in peripheral edema or anasarca, peripheral edema per se does not mean that the patient is hypervolemic. So maybe we should avoid the term fluid overload. So D2 is on diagnosis and the fluid status matters. There's a lot of myths uh, surrounding this. Septic patients are not always hypervolemic and surgical patients are also not always hypovolemic. Sepsis does not mean that there are huge insensible losses. And peripheral edema does not mean that the patient needs to be given diuretics. A low preload also does not mean that the patient needs to be given fluid. So if we look at the results of the International Fluid Academy uh, Knowledge Survey on the question what is the closest to the sodium content of saline, you can see that about 70% got it right. It's 154 milli equivalents or millimoles per liter. What comes uh, closest to the glucose content of a resuscitation fluid, like uh, plasma light or ring as a Hartmann solution, you see that um, some believe uh, that there is uh, glucose in this uh, solution. So sometimes you see these solutions given as maintenance. So 45% got it right, there is no glucose. Next question, how much is the free sodium of one liter of saline? Here, only 11% got it right. There's a misconception that we think there is nine grams, it's only 3.5. And if we then uh, ask what is the maximum daily recommended intake, it's 2.3 grams. So one liter of saline already contains more sodium than we need. And this sodium will build up, will accumulate under the skin everywhere in the body. And it may take weeks to get rid of it, even um, by healthy kidneys. So the sodium balance may even be more important than the fluid balance. So in this knowledge survey, which was answered by over 1,000 colleagues, physicians, and also uh, training and nurses, do you think it's safe to give a balanced infusion fluid with a potassium content of five milliequivalents per liter to a patient with renal insufficiency 
and uh, already a diminished clearance and maybe a potassium level of for instance six and you can see here that 49 percent stated that it's safe so there is a lot of um, misconception uh, surrounding this so i will try to elucidate this so the overall survey there were many knowledge questions the score was 46 uh, percent so we were sacked and probably you will be sacked uh, as well why because to err is human we make mistakes but we must forget about the mistakes and remember the lessons so it is about the drug fluids are drugs and they come with indications contraindications maximum doses potential adverse effects and the first goal is avoid doing harm so of course the dose is important as all things are poisonous and it's the dose that makes something a poison so therefore if you would like to save lives during resuscitation phase it's probably not a good idea to give a hypotonic solution as only 10 percent will remain intravascularly for crystalloids we learned is about 25 to 30 percent and colloids we assume that at least during the first four six hours they will remain 100 percent intravascularly there's a very nice infographic in this publication bmg uh, that may be helpful so the question about today is is it safe to use a potassium containing buffered balanced solution in an icu patient with acute renal failure and for instance a potassium level already slightly increased up to six so if we look at the composition of normal plasma around the sodium level 140 chloride 100 so a simplified calculation of the strong ion difference would give 40. so we have some um, strong cations like uh, potassium calcium magnesium and onions like lactate and, and sulfate so if we uh, then compare this to what i would call abnormal saline 0.9 percent contains 154 um, sodium and equal chloride so the sit is zero if we just have the simple formula sodium minus chloride a set of zero and we know that the sit is related to the ph the higher the sit the higher the ph so if we then would combine theoretically this one liter of plasma with one liter of saline we would now have 140 plus 154 divided by two is 147 of sodium and 127 of chloride which would give a strong ion difference of 20 which means that the sit has come down and this will result in a ph that will drop so if we then uh, go back to our uh, hypothetical patient with a ki and a potassium of six so if you would just look at the dilutional effect six plus zero divided by two is three but at the main time uh, same time this patient uh, developed hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis and this also will induce an increase in potassium levels so this is uh, the final result that potassium may even remain stable or increase in critically ill patients so if we then have the situation where we have one liter of plasma as explained and we would now look at the buffered uh, solution i think the term buffered is better than uh, balanced um, plasma light uh, contains 140 of sodium 98 of chloride um, there is potassium of five magnesium of three uh, so if we we'll add up and take uh, the difference we will end up with a strong ion difference of 50 and and this is taken into account by adding acetate and gluconate so plasma light will increase uh, the ph if you would then combine one liter of plasma with the plasma light we would have an average sodium of 140 unchanged chloride would basically remain unchanged but because of the uh, increase uh, in uh, potassium 
uh, and magnesium, there will be a slight increase of the sit from 40 going to 45. So this increase in sit may result in an increase in the pH. So if we then go back to the hypothetical case, we take EI, potassium of six, we add up five. If it would just be dilutional, we would end up with 5.5, so it would already drop. Uh, so the misconception that it would increase uh, is unjust. But then we also have the metabolic alkalosis, which uh, may in turn uh, drop uh, potassium levels. D5 is on duration, so of course we should give fluids not to treat the numbers, not because blood pressure is low or CVP is low, or cardiac output is low, but because the patient is in shock and end organ failure. And we should try to de-escalate as soon as possible, which brings me to the ROSE concept and the four phases of shock, dynamic phases, resuscitation, saving the patients, optimizing an organ support maintenance, and then stabilization. And when uh, there is impact, of fluid accumulation and organ function, we need to evacuate, hence the ROSE concept. So after the first hit, whether it's sepsis, trauma or burns, fluids must be given and fluid balance uh, needs to be uh, positive. Then comes uh, the second hit, which is related to ischemia reperfusion, fluids will accumulate, fluid overload is a biomarker of uh, disease severity. Uh, fluid balance should be neutral. And at some point, uh, the excess of fluids given uh, will be evacuated either spontaneously, like you see in a polyuric phase after tubular necrosis, or with a little help with diuretics or ultrafiltration. Of course, when we are removing fluids, we must avoid hypoperfusion, hence the ROSE uh, acronym. And the reason why we do this, because fluid overload um, at the outside, peripheral edema, anasarca, mirrors fluid accumulation at the inside at the level of the organs, resulting in venous uh, congestion and this global increased permeability uh, syndrome. So what uh, can we do further? Well, I think if you would ask the question, how many hours of education are given on fluid management? Well, the answer is zero. I can't recall any uh, didactic lectures on this topic. So there is a knowledge gap and we need to move forward. And that's exactly the reason why the International Fluid Academy uh, was founded. And by introducing fluid stewardship, which is a series of uh, coordinated um, interventions introduced to select the optimal dose duration of therapy that results in the best clinical outcome prevention of adverse events and cost uh, reduction. By doing so, and this is what happened at University Hospital in Brussels, uh, over the years, we were able to come down in the amount of liters given per stay from almost four to 2.3, as well as in the amount of liters uh, given per day, hospitalization day, taken all together from 0 0.6 to 0 0.4 uh, liters. So to wrap things up, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you will agree with me that IV fluids, they are not just uh, innocent bags of water, but uh, in fact, uh, they are and they should be treated uh, as drugs coming with indications, contraindications, adverse effects. So I briefly introduced, and you can find more lectures on the 70s uh, conceptual framework on the Fluid Academy website, um, the different uh, Ds, um, and taking this two together, uh, this will um, lead to a personalized fluid therapy. You can't do this alone, you need a fluid team, fluid uh, stewards. So getting back to this fact uh, checker, so it is a fact that a balanced buffered crystallite solution containing potassium at around five milliequivalent per liter can be used safely in patients with AKI and increased um, potassium levels around six milliequivalent per liter. So the explanation is that due to the 
increased instead by the buffered solution, pH will increase giving metabolic alkalosis and drop in uh, potassium, aside from any uh, dilutional effect. And unbalanced solutions like uh, abnormal uh, sodium chloride, 0.9%, even if they do not contain potassium, can worsen metabolic acidosis, hyperchloremic, and hence further increase uh, potassium levels. That's why we should not use them in large amounts. Having said that, it's my pleasure to invite you to join the International Fluid uh, Academy uh, with the free lifetime membership and access to the repository. Thank you. Stay safe.